How to make the zippy tray case with Amber Makes Sewing School. Get organised with this clever case and it comes with a matching mini pouch. Learn how to insert a zip and follow me and I'll show you how. Cutting and preparing the fabric. Start by pressing your fabric panel and if you have a look at it you can see all the pieces are labelled with the label above them. You need to cut around the outer edge of all the pieces, the seam allowances are included, and pin the label to the top edge of the right side of each piece so that you remember which piece is which when you're assembling the zippy tray case. Once it's all cut out you can see that I've labelled all the pieces. There's the case outer and the case lining. and the tray sides and there's all the other pieces that you will need for the tray case you can see that I've labelled all of them and put them all onto one side and there's the pieces for the mini pouch you'll also need some wadding and some interfacing a zip and some cord and the measurements for all of these are listed in the instructions now you need to place some wadding on the outer piece. As you can see here, I've cut the wadding a quarter of an inch smaller all the way around and then I've tacked it into place. You can press it if you're using fusible wadding and then to add detail, quilt through all the layers. You'll need to cut two pieces of interfacing from the piece that's listed in the instructions. These are for the tray sides and put these to one side for now and then use the rest to press it onto the lining. This just gives your tray case a little extra stiffness and you can press this right up to the edge. It doesn't need to be quarter an inch from the sides. Adding the handle. Take the handle piece, you can remove the label and fold the short ends over by quarter of an inch to the wrong side. The easiest way to do this is to measure half an inch inwards from one short edge and then fold the short edge so it meets up with these marks and in that way you can be sure you've turned it over exactly by a quarter of an inch. Give that a press, you can either do that with an iron or just with your finger and then repeat that to turn the other short end under by half an inch to the wrong side. Now once the two short ends are turned under like this, fold the whole handle in half lengthways with right sides facing. Pin them together at those short ends and put the pin through to make sure that the turned over ends stay turned under. And then pin together at the other end again making sure they stay turned under. Then place a nether pin, making sure those long raw edges match up and stitch together all the way down the length. Once that's done, I've pressed the seam open and flat here and then turn it right sides out. I'm going to use a turning tube for this just because it's easier and quicker. If you don't have one of these, then just carefully turn the handle right sides out. The little short ends may have come out, so just pop them back by turning them under with your fingers because you've already pressed them. So they'll go back in. So just turn them under. Now press the whole handle nice and flat and then top stitch along the top and bottom edges. And there the handle is now finished. and ready to attach the case out. So they take the case out and place it right sides up with the top edge at the top. The handle needs to be placed right sides up on top of this. It needs to be central across the length. So if you fold the handle in half, you'll just find the center, just place a pin and then you'll find the center. And it also needs to be placed one and three quarter inches down from the top edge. Again, all of these measurements and details are in the instructions, so you can refer to those. So place it one and three quarter inch down from the top and centrally across, either by marking the center, either by folding or measuring. Once you're happy that it's nice and straight and across the center, pin it into place at either end. Now sew the ends of the handle to the case out by stitching a rectangle half inch height with a cross through it for strength. And now you've attached the handle 
to the case outer. Sewing the zip. Fold the case outer in half to find and mark the centres of the top and the bottom short edges. And you can repeat that with the lining as well. Now take the zip and fold it in half because you want to find the centre of the zip tape. So fold it carefully and mark the centre. You can either use a pin or a pencil for this. I'm putting a pin in here, but I also like to mark it with pencil at the top and the bottom so it's easier to, for sewing it on to the other side later. Now make sure the zip is right sides facing with the case outer and mark up those, match up those pins, making sure that the edge of the zip tape matches the raw edge of the case outer and the centres are marked. This is just to make sure the zip is placed centrally. Now pin together all the way around, you need to be matching the edge of the zip tape to the raw edge of the fabric. So I'm going to pin either side of the zip at this stage. Now to help the zip curve around those curved edges that are on the case outer, make small snips, snips into the actual zip tape. They need to be a little bit less than a quarter of an inch in length so they don't go into the seam allowance and place them about a quarter of an inch in part. You only need to put the snips where it's going to curve round. You don't need to do them on the straight bits. But I do the snips for about an inch and a half, two inches at this stage. It doesn't matter if they do go beyond the curved edge, but just don't make them any more than a quarter of an inch in length. Now you can pin the zip tape around the edge. And because of those little snips, they open up the zip tape and helps it to curve around the edge. Because the zip tape is quite stiff and with the teeth as well, opening it up just will give you a neater finish and it will be less bulky. So just pin it into place all the way around the edge. And then when you get to the straight section that goes down the side, you can just pin straight then. When I pin round the curved edges, I put my pins in vertically at that stage because the more pins you put in, the better it is. But when you put them on straight edges, you can put your pins in horizontally. Pin all the way to the end. The zip extends beyond the end of the case outer, which is intentional as you'll trim it later. Now do exactly the same around the other curved edge. Again, because you need more pins, because you're opening up the zip and you need to make sure it, it's always important that the tape matches up with the raw edges exactly. So put in vertical pins and that means that you can get more in and it will hold it in place more exactly than horizontal pins. And then when you get to the straight edge, you can place your pins horizontally again, all the way to the end. Always making sure that the edge of the zip tape matches up with the raw edge of the fabric. And now you've pinned the whole zip to the case outer. So just tack it into place. Use a longer stitch on your sewing machine and work within the seam allowance. So you can see here, I've just worked about an eighth inch on the edge. And the reason I do this is it means I don't have to take out the tacking stitches afterwards because they will just disappear into the seam allowance. Now take the case lining and place that right sides down on top. If you've marked the centers of the case lining and the outer, you can match those up. If not, just match up those edges. It's very important that those pointed side edges match up exactly. So I always like to pin it into place at one end and the other end. And as I said, if you've marked the center on the case lining, you can match up the centers as well. So make sure they match up exactly because it's really important that the zip comes out at exactly the same place as the case A to in the case lining. Now you can just pin the lining into place because you've already done all the snipping and the fitting of the zip and then tacked it into place. This is a lot simpler because everything fits really nicely now. The zip will be sandwiched between the outer and the lining, so it's really important that all raw edges and zip tape edge all match up. It just means that your zip will sit more evenly within the seam and will look the same width when it's finished. Just take the time here to make sure raw edges are matching up and put in as many pins as you need and you will get a much neater finish if you take the time to pin it now. 
When you get to the curves, just tuck the zip inside a little bit because the teeth make it want to stick outwards. So just push it back in. And then pin it into place. Now you can sew it into place. Use a zip foot on your machine and sew it into place using a quarter inch seam allowance and it will look like this. So everything is now sewn together and the zip foot allows you to get closer to the seam. Now on those curves, just cut little snips around the curves. This will just help the seam to open up when it turns right sides out. Make sure you don't cut into the actual stitching, but just little snips about a quarter of an inch apart around that curved edge will just help the seam to lay flatter. Now once you've done that, turn it all right sides out so that the zip is lying right on the edge. Now lay everything down flat and press it so that you pull out the zip so that the seam is laying right on the edge. And then again, do this on the other side. I'm just doing it with my fingers, but when you do yours, use your iron to press it to make sure that the lining and the outer is staying flat and the seam is on the edge. And then top stitch just inside the edge of the case outer all the way around. This holds the outer and the lining nice and flat and also adds a nice detail and stops any fabric from getting caught in the zip teeth. But it's important that the fabric's laying flat before you top stitch. Now we can start working on the other end to attach the zip. So fold the case outer at the other end in half to find the centre and I mark the centre of the zip when I mark the centre the first time. You can see you can either fold it in half again or if you mark it at the beginning it's easier. Now just working on the case outer, so separate the outer from the lining, match up the centre marks. So we're going to sew the zip, other side of the zip, to the other end of the case outer in exactly the same way as you sewed the zip onto the top end of the case outer. Again, match the centre marks, pin it together all the way along and then snip into the zip tape where it reaches the curved corners. Just make those little snips all the way along a little bit less than a quarter of an inch. But because you've already attached the zip to one end, you know what you're doing this time. You can do this with the zip open or closed. I prefer to do it with the zip closed only because it means that everything matches up better. Because if the zip is closed, you can be sure that you are sewing the bottom end of the case out in exactly the same place as the top end. So I would leave the zip closed while you're pinning. If you want to open it while you're sewing, that's fine. But while you're pinning, leave the zip closed. And again, once you've done those snips, pin it into place around the curved edge, opening up the zip tape a little bit so that it fits. Put as many pins as you need to make sure that it opens up, but also to make sure that the edge of the zip tape is matching with the raw edge of the fabric, and then pin it together down the side. And make sure that the end, that pointed end, is in exactly the same place on the zip tape as the pointed end of the top end of the case outer. It should be because you've matched everything up exactly, but just do, be double sure that it matches up and then it just means that the case outer will end up at the same place on the zip. Again place vertical pins and open up the zip tape a little bit so it curves nicely around the corner. and then pin it into place all the way along the edge. And then just double check when you get to the end that the pointed end meets up on the zip in the same place as the other end of the case outer. Once you've done that, same way as before, tack it into place all the way along using a longer stitch on your machine and within the seam allowance. You can hand tack if you prefer, but machine tacking is a lot quicker and easier. Now take the other end of the case lining and place that on top. Make sure that the pointed ends meet up exactly 
So we're doing this in the same way, sandwiching the end of the zip, the zip tape, between the case lining and the case outer, and they are right sides facing. Match up those pointed ends. and then pin together all the way along. So this is the same process as you did at the other end of the zip. Take your time to make sure that the zip is pushed in exactly because when you get to those curved corners, because the teeth are stiff, it wants to jump out. So just push it all nice inside because if you pin it all into place and you haven't got any little pleats or creases, it's much easier when you sew. Now you've pinned the lining into place using a zip foot on your machine, sew together through all the layers close to the zip. Once that's done, there's the seam, you can see it's a quarter of an inch width. Again, make little snips around the curved edges, just up to the seam, but not actually into it. And this will help the seam to lay flat and open because this just opens up the edges. Now you can turn the whole case right sides out. Just push everything through. And then undo the zip at this stage. And do it right to the end. There we are. Now, flatten everything out. So in the same way as you did with the other end, pull the lining and the outer away from the zip so that the seam is laying right on the edge. It's really important that they're both flat and there aren't any creases. So do press it from both sides. So pull it out so that the seam is laying on the edge. If you press it, it will stay like that. And then top stitch about a quarter of an inch in from the edge. It will look like this and it will give you a much neater finish and it's matching on both sides of the zip. Now, if you close the zip, you can see that the case outer and the case lining are all attached and your zippy tray case is starting to take shape. Making the zip tabs. Take one zip tab, remove the label and fold it in half with wrong sides facing and give it a press to march the centre crease. Then open it out and fold the raw edges so they meet in the centre. You can fold one at a time and give it a press and then fold the other raw edge in so it meets at that centre crease. And then fold it in half completely, matching up those folded under edges. And this just include, include cases all the raw edges and then top stitch down both long edges just to neaten and hold it together then fold it in half so the short ends meet and tack together across that completes one little zip tab repeat this to make the other zip tab in exactly the same way and put them to one side for now creating the corners now take your case that you've made and line up the raw edges of the cutout sections. They will have shifted a bit while sewing. So make sure that the outer and the lining raw edges match up. I like to pin it at the corners first and then pin it between. So just adjust the fabric so that the raw edges meet up and pin together along the long edge. And then pin together down the short edges, again adjusting the fabrics so that the raw edges meet up exactly. And then pin together down the other side edge. Then repeat this on the other side. Match up the corners first. Just adjusting the fabrics. If you move one back, you can then double check that they match up exactly. Pin together across the corners and then pin together between. Again, making sure they all lay flat. The outer of the lining is exactly the same size, so they will meet up. It's just that they will have moved slightly when you're inserting the zip. So 
So place another pin along the long edge and then you can pin together along the short edges. Again, adjusting the two fabrics so that the raw edges meet up. Now, once you've pinned them together, tack together down the short edge, along the long edge and up the short edge on both sides. Remember to tack within the seam allowance and then it will look like this and it all meets up nice and neatly and it will all stay in place for the next stage. I've quilted a line down the centre, but you can leave that if you like. I just did that to hold the lining flat. Now, to create the first corner, measure across the long edge and mark the centre. I'm just marking this with a pin and then double check that that's exactly in the centre. Now take one of your zip ends and pin it so it sits exactly in the centre and that the raw edges meet up. And then repeat that at the other side. Then tack it into place again within the seam allowance so that those zip tabs are right in the centre. These are just decorative, but they just helped for opening the zip later. Now fold one side, working on the open end of the zip first, so it sits right across and the corner of the long and the short sides is right in the corner. And then lay it so it's nice and flat and all the raw edges match up and pin it together. Now take the other short side and lay it on top so that that corner meets up and you get a nice triangular point there. Pin it together so all of those raw edges meet up. Now the zip teeth need to meet in the centre of the zip tab. So just arrange them like I'm doing here, just so they meet up in the centre, just because you'll get a neater finish that way. You can see they're meeting up in the centre there, making sure the raw edges are matching up. And obviously the zip ends stick out beyond the end of the raw edges. So just make sure that the teeth meet in the centre and put a few pins to hold it together. Now sew it together all the way along. And then it will look like this. And that's one corner created. So if you open it out, you can see the zip tab is in the centre of the teeth. The teeth are sitting underneath the zip tab and everything is nicely held together. And then just trim off the ends of the fabric and the zip so that it meets up and you've got a nice straight edge. Now we're going to create the other corner in exactly the same way. It's a little bit different because you've got the closed end of the zip. So move the zip slider right to the other end so it's well out of the way because we're gonna cut the end of the zip off now. Now cut it off just inside the metal end. The aim here is because we want to open the teeth this is the easiest way to not get a bulky tray case. Once you've done that, open up the zip teeth. Because you've moved the slider out of the way, it won't all come undone. And then you can sew the other, create the other corner in the same way. Fold the short end over the long end so that the corners meet exactly. And you've got a nice triangular point on the edge. Making sure the raw edges match up, pin it into place. And then do that on the other side, fold it so that the outer sides are right sides facing. Move the zip slider along a little bit if you need some more space to be able to get everything laying flat. When I made the first one of these, I didn't open up the zip and I just created it with the closed end of the zip. And you get a really bulky finish, but by doing it this way, you get a really nice, flat and even finish. And it's quite easy. It just means you're separating the zip teeth, but don't worry, we'll put them back together later. Again, arrange the teeth so that they are sitting exactly on top of the zip tab in the centre. You may need to put a few pins in just to make sure they sit on there. And then sew together all the way along. Once that's done, it will look like this. It looks exactly the same as the other end. And cut off. Just trim the fabric and the zip so that it meets up and the raw edges are all nice and matching. Now you can pull your zip slider right to the other end again because it's all sewn into place. Turn it right sides out to do that, it's a little bit easier. But because you opened up the zip teeth and cut off the end, you'll now find you've got a nice flat finish. So pull the slider right to the end. 
Now, what I do at this stage is I'm going to work a few small hand sewing stitches across the end of the zip teeth. These will be removed later, but I just find for safety, because you've only got one line of sewing over them, I find that by putting in a, just a few small tacking stitches, so just work some stitches over and around the end of the zip teeth, it just secures them and holds them while you're creating the rest of the zippy tray case because you're going to be turning it right sides out and wrong sides out a few times and this is just a little bit of extra safety these stitches don't need to be neat it doesn't matter whether you're using matching thread or not because you will remove them later but it just adds a little extra security at this stage so just work a few stitches over and around the zip and then to make sure that they stay in place just work a couple of little stitches on top of each other you can then trim off the thread and you know that your zip slider is secure. So now the main body of your zippy tray case is complete. We've still got to add the tray side to stop everything falling out, but you've done the main bit. You can see the zip goes diagonally. The little zip tabs help because you can hold them to open and close the zip, but really they're just to add a little bit of decoration. making the tray sides. Take one of the tray side pieces and fold it in half with wrong sides facing so that the bottom long edges and the side edges meet up and then press it. You're aiming to make a crease along the top edge. Unfold it and with it wrong sides up Take the piece of interfacing you cut earlier and place it glue side down on the wrong side, but place it on the lining print side. You'll see now that it's quarter of an inch in from the sides and up from the bottom and the top of the interfacing meets that central crease. Press it carefully into place. Then fold the bottom raw edge over by quarter of an inch on top of the interfacing. Because the interfacing is quarter of an inch from the bottom, it's easy to do this. You don't need to measure you can just fold it up by a quarter of an inch so that it overlaps the interfacing. Now fold it in half, but you need to fold it in half at that centre mark where the print changes. I like to put a pin in there and then pin it together and then remove that pin and you know it's in the right place. So you can see that the bottom edge without the interfacing extends a quarter of an inch beyond the folded under edge. Do the same on the other side. Again, put a pin in that central mark where the print changes and then fold it exactly that mark. Take the pin out and then pin it together and then matching raw edges, pin together down this side as well. When you pin, make sure that you pin that folded under edge so it stays folded under. So pop a pin in there. Now sew together down both sides. Once it's done, it will look like this. You need to just trim off those top corners. That just removes bulk from the corner so that when you turn it right sides out, it will be, you'll have a nice neat corner. Now turn the tray side right sides out, push out those corners. And then use something to push into the corners not something too pointy because you don't want to go through the seams, but just enough so you've got a nice right angled corner. And now you can give it a press. So smooth it out with your hands, making sure that the seams, those side seams lay right on the edge and give them a press. The folded under edge you did earlier, you've sewn on top of, so that will stay in place. So roll the side seams between your fingers and give that a press. and then press it along the top edge, making sure that everything is nice and flat. Now top stitch along the top edge of the right side and it will look like this. And that's one tray side complete. Make the other tray side in exactly the same way. Attaching the tray sides. Place one tray side right sides facing on top of the lining side of the case at the open end of the zip. So the raw long edge matches up with the raw edge of the corner. The outer print of the tray side should be right sides facing with the zip side of the tray case. Make sure the raw edges are matching and pinned together. 
you'll see that the tray side sticks out a little bit beyond the edge of the case but don't worry about that because when you sew it into place you will take that into account because it's, it sticks out by a quarter of an inches. Make sure all the raw edges match up and that you only pin into the raw edges. You can see the turned under edge of the tray side is out of the way because you don't want to stitch into that. So keep that out of the way whilst you're pinning. Then sew them together all the way along. You might have to open up the tray side a little bit there just to pin it right into the corner. Sew it into place all the way along, making sure that you don't stitch into that turned under edge at all. And then it will look like this. So you've attached that tray side. Now flip the tray side over and the raw edges will just naturally go underneath the turned under edge. So pin the turned under edge on top so it just covers the seam that you've just made. Pin it into place all the way along. Because you turned the edge under, It will just cover that up. That's why it helps to have pressed it all under before you started. Now you need to slip stitch this into place. I prefer to do slip stitch this by hand. If you machine stitch it, you'll be able to see the stitch to the other side and it won't be as neat. So secure the thread at one end. We're only going to be stitching into the lining. So secure the thread just through the lining of the case and work your slip stitches so they go under the, line, the case lining and just underneath the fold of the fabric on the tray sides. Double check as you're stitching along that, you're, that none of your stitches go into the outer. This will give you a much neater finish because by doing this hand stitching on the tray side, you won't see anything from the other side and also it will line flatter too. So work all the way along and once you've slip stitched right to the other end, work a few small stitches on top of each other and cut the thread. Now you've attached the long edge of the tray side into place. So the next thing you need to do is sew the sides up. So fold the sides so they're lying straight up and you'll see that the top of them is just below where the zip is. It won't go right up to, it goes up to about the level of the top stitching and you don't want it to go right to the top. It needs to be high enough so it will hold everything in place but you don't want it to get caught into the zip. So make sure it's laying nice and flat and straight. Make sure it's not skewed or an angle. It needs to lie nice and straight and just up to the top. Then slip stitch that side into place and the other side. Again, make sure you only slip stitch into the lining and not into the outer. So I'm just finishing off slip stitching the second side into place. I find it easier to work from the start at the top and work down. And just checking every now and then to make sure that my stitches are only going into the lining. You have to hand stitch these tray sides into place. It just gives you a neater look. And you don't, if you machine stitch them, they, you would see the stitching from the outside and it won't look as neat. But they're just small slip stitches. So just use a matching thread to work these. And then when you get to the end, work a few small stitches on top of each other just to make sure that the thread is secure and that your seam doesn't come undone. And then that's one tray side in place, as you can see. Now the other tray side is stitched on in exactly the same way. You may find it easier, like I've done, to undo the tacking stitches and separate the zip teeth. So those tacking stitches you put in earlier, I said that they were temporary, so just undo those, move the slider and separate the zip teeth. And again, pin the tray side onto the tray, onto the tray case body so that you've got those lining sides facing and that the raw edge is matching with the raw edge of the case body and that the turned under edge is on the other side. If you match up the prints, that's the, probably the easiest way to do it so that the lining sides of the tray side and the tray body are facing each other. And pin into place. When you're actually doing this, it will make sense which side you pin on. Pin it together and then sew it. This is exactly the same as the other side. Make sure you don't sew into that piece. Then fold it over, 
the raw edge will just tuck naturally under that turned under edge. Pin it into place all the way along, making sure the turned under edge just covers the seam just to get a neater finish so that you don't see any sewing. Slip stitch that into place, then fold up the tray sides so that right angles and slip stitch those into place. I'm just showing you the whole process, but obviously you slip stitch the long edge before you slip stitch the side edges. And then it will look like this and both of your tray sides are now in place. You can see the zip slide is still in the middle. Open up the whole thing so it's right sides out and push out all of those corners. They'll naturally, they'll push out quite nicely. You can press them as well. And then take the zip slider all the way down to the end. This was the closed end of the zip that you remove the stitches from. And just for a little bit of extra security, although the end of the zip is sewn into that seam, I still like to work a few little stitches on top of each other in a thread that matches the zip, just because it makes it extra secure. Because obviously with this tray case, you're going to be using it quite a lot and opening and closing the zip. So in the same way that your zip had a little metal end which held the seat teeth together, these stitches that you're working are to replace that little metal end. It just gives it a little bit of extra security when you're opening and closing the zip regularly. So work a few small stitches on top of each other just through the zip teeth. And the little zip tab will sit on top of that and you won't be able to see the stitches. They just give it, make it extra secure. Now you can turn the whole thing right sides out. So if you open it up, you can see that the bottom lays flat. The tray sides will keep everything in close so that when you want to use it, nothing will fall out. Push the tray sides in when you want to close it and close the zip. Remove any labels that you've still left in place. You won't obviously be needing these now. Pull out the corners and there's your zippy tray case, all finished and ready to fill. Making the mini pouch. Place the mini pouch outer and the mini pouch lining right sides facing, making sure the top edges of each match up. Now making sure all the raw edges match up, pin together all round. The two pieces of fabric are the same size, so they will meet up. I like to pin them together in the corners first and then pin between. You'll get a more accurate finish by doing this. So again, rearrange it to pin together at the corners and then pin between along the side. Now you need to leave a turning gap in one side, it doesn't matter which one. So measure to find the centre and mark the centre. And then mark one inch either side of this centre mark and that leaves a two inch turning gap. So if you mark these with a pen or with pins, then you remember to stop and start stitching here. So now stitch the two pieces of fabric together all the way around, starting at one side of the turning gap and finishing at the other, reverse stitching at either end to secure. Once that's done, press the seam allowances over one to one side all the way around. With the turning gap, press the seam allowances over to one side on both sides. Clip off the corners. That just helps to reduce the bulk when you turn it right sides out so you get nice, neat right angle corners. So just snip those off taking care not to cut through the stitching. Now you've done that, you can turn it right sides out. So put your fingers inside the turning gap, grab hold of the opposite corner, push that up through and the whole thing will turn out right sides out nice and easily. 
Now push your fingers into each of the corners to push them out. So work your way around doing one at a time, pushing your finger into each corner and that pushes it right sides out. And then to get nice neat corners, push a sharp a item. I use the um, wooden stick for my turning tool. It needs to be pointy, but not sharp. So don't use scissors, otherwise you might go through the fabric. But it needs to be reasonably pointy. If you push the fabric onto the tool rather than the tool into the fabric, you're less likely to go through the fabric. Once that's done, place it on your ironing mat and then roll the seams between your fingers so they lay on the edge and then press them flat all the way round. Work all the way round, making sure that it's nice and flat and the seams lay right on the edge. When you get to the edge with the turning gap, this, you've already pressed those under so they will stay under. Then top stitch all the way round. This neatens the edge but also holds the turning gap closed. And then it will look like this. So now your outer and your lining is joined together. Now to create one of the corners, from one corner measure two and a half inches along and mark with a pin. And then up the other side of that corner, mark the same measurement, two and a half inches up from the corner and mark that with a pin. Now fold the corner over so the edges of it match up with those pins and you've got a nice right angled triangle that's two and a half inches long on either side. Pin that into place and then give it a press to hold that corner neatly in place and you can remove those placement pins. That's just so that you've got a nice neat corner. Repeat this in the other three corners in exactly the same way. And then it will look like this and all the corners are folded over. Now stitch along these corners but using a three eighths of an inch seam allowance. That's just about right to be able to get the cord through. So now you can see the corners are all held into place Take the cord or ribbon, the measurement for this is listed in the instructions, fold it in half and cut it into two equal pieces because the amount that's listed in the, in the ingredients is for the whole thing. So cut it in half to make two pieces. Put a safety pin at one end of your cord or ribbon. It needs to be quite narrow because obviously it's got to go through those little channels. This narrow cord is really good for that because it's quite silky, but a ribbon will do as well. Close the safety pin and starting in one of the corners, and it doesn't matter which, push your safety pin to thread the cord all the way through the channel. Pull it out the other side, and then thread it through the next channel. Make sure you work through one channel at a time so that it doesn't get all twisted up. Pull it out through the other one, and then work all the way through the next one. Don't pull it too hard because you don't want the end of the cord to come through, but the cord is long enough so that it will go all the way through. Just don't pull it too hard, otherwise you'll have to start again. And then finally, go through the other drawstring channel. Again, I'm pulling it enough so that I can push it through the channel, but not too much so it doesn't disappear. Once that's done, remove the safety pin and then tie the two ends of the cord in a knot. Make sure that the ends of them are matching up and tie them in a knot close to the end. You can see mine's about half an inch from the end there. Pull up the cord to tighten it. Now open it up and then take the other length of cord or ribbon and pop the safety pin in there. Now you need to thread the cord through in the same way but from the opposite side. So where the knot is, just work across, find the opposite side and then thread the cord or ribbon through the channels in the same way. So working through all four channels and obviously you'll be going through the same channels as the other cords. It might be a little bit stiffer. Once you come out the other side that you started, take the safety pin off and tie the two ends of the cord in a knot. To make the knots extra secure, I like to give them a, a, a nice pull. So pull the ends and then pull the 
inside. So you're pulling the knot from both directions and then just snip off the very ends of the cord just because they may have become a little bit frayed by going through the channels and that just neatens them a little bit. And now your mini pouch is finished. So pull up the cords and the lining fabric will sit like little petals on the outside which just gives it a pretty finish and it will open up flat. When you want to close it after you've put something inside just tie the cordal ribbon loosely into a knot and you can tie it in a bow as well to make it secure. It depends on the ribbon you've used but I find you don't always need to tie it in a bow because that just gives a pretty finish. Now you can fill your matching zippy tray case. So if you take the mini pouch, it will open up flat like a little tray. You can fill it with whatever you want. I'm going to put fabric clips in mine, but you could put other items, whether you're using it for your sewing kit or whether you're using it for other items like makeup or hair accessories or stationery. Put everything inside, tie it up with a little bow, and you can use it to work from because when you open it up, it's like a tray, and pop it in your zippy tray case. Now you can put other things in here. So I'm going to use mine as my sewing kit that I can use for workshops or on the go or just keep it with me in my sewing basket. Fill it with thread and needles and pens. Pop your little mini pouch inside. And then all you have to do is fold the tray sides in. Hold on one of the zip tabs to close the zip. Pop the other side tray side in and there you go. It's all ready and finished. And you've finished your whole zippy tray case set.